I'm Richard Herring. I hope that answers any questions you have. And welcome to episode five of the uh, uh, and the Fist of Fun at ten. Yeah. And this week. We breathe a sigh of relief as we didn't manage to get hit by the runaway Chinese satellite Phew, here at the studio. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> I was looking forward to the ultimate Chinese burn there, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was really hoping, Stu. I was hoping that that satellite would land just off the coast of Taiwan and destroy the entire Chinese Navy. That would have been kind of a <laughs> dramatic justice. Ironic I don't, I don't about understand. that. I don't understand why the Chinese want to invade Taiwan anyway, really. Oh, come on, Stu. Think! Well, think, you idiot! Yeah, think about it! Are you a fool? <laughs> Yes. Why? I don't know. Think, Lee, think! Can't you know the answer? Know you do! I don't! You do! What is it? It's because Taiwan, that's where they make all the toys that go inside Kinder Eggs, oh. isn't it? <laughs> the Chinese government are trying to get all the whole collection of every Kinder Egg toy without having to buy the Kinder Egg shell out if that's 50p a time. You think of that, add that Rich, all up, that saves a lot of money. Rich, you are, what, the mistake you're making is you're ascribing your motives towards world leaders. It's not going to work. I don't think, like, <laughs> Shanky Chen is not collecting the crazy crocos, is he? <laughs> no, he isn't, Stu. Because it's the Sharky Babbers now, Brad. <laughs> Come on! I'm not doing it. Oh, the crazy crocos. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, you the Sharky Babbers. You should be a shame. never heard of them. You should be The Sharky Babbers. <laughs> They're great because... They're blue. They're blue. And most Kinder Egg toys are green. Oh, no, no. oh, happy hippos. And now they're blue and they shine as well. We <laughs> and they successfully combine an Arabian Nights theme with um ten sharks. sharks. Yeah. <laughs> I've got all the I keep all the toys, I collect them, and I put them in a glass cabinet in my house, right? And I collect the chocolate as well. Where do you put that? <laughs> in my tummy. <laughs> It's coming along well, that collection, though. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, man, thanks. Very impressive. Yeah. Anyway, what have you been up to this week? Then? Well, I went to the cinema. I finally got to see Seven. It's a great film, actually, right. I tell you. Because I hadn't seen one, two, three, four, five, or six. <laughs> and I could still pick up the plot, the yeah. characters, everything. It was fantastic. It's not it? really like that, which is not like Police Academy Seven or something. Like <laughs> no, too <laughs> right it isn't. It's not at all funny, I tell yeah. you. <laughs> that bit where they put the circular saw in that man's pants. Do you think that's funny? You're sick, I tell you. You're <laughs> sick. <laughs> pants are funny, but not with a circular saw. It's not, it's, not, it's not to do with the I like, no, not... I like the film, it's a good film. I liked it I... so much I decided to go and see one of the others in the series. It's not... I went to see ten. Uh, it's not... <laughs> a lot must have happened in eight and nine. It's, uh, it's, not... <laughs> it's completely different. Morgan Freeman, he's had a sex change. He's James Rage. It was good that bit where he's running along the beach in that see through top there. That's not Gary. It's, it's not more... It's, there's no dude, I liked it, I liked it. I liked it a lot, right? I went to see another in the series. I couldn't, it's not a... I couldn't find hardly any of them, but I managed to find 2001. It's not... Uh, <laughs> I tell you, it's not <laughs> A lot must have happened in 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 1995, 1996, 1997, 1998, 1999, or 2000. Because yeah. it's completely different, you know, it's, it's in... It's in, it's in outer space. Brad Pitt has changed into a big black rock. Oh. Where <laughs> Duddy Moore is a, a monkey. Yeah, no change there. <laughs> it's completely different. Yeah. It's just completely. I can't believe it. Rich, it's change. The film 2001 is not part of a sequence which includes the films 10 and 7. <laughs> I wish you'd told me that well, halfway through the counting or something. Uh, we, well, uh, well, I think they'll be able to cut some of that out, that countdown. Well, yeah. It'll be a very, very dull programme. <laughs> just do <you> counting. <laughs> I think you've tried this audience's patience to the limit now. <laughs> Look at me, I'm an old man. <laughs> when this began, I was young. How come you... I've <laughs> stolen the best years of my life. <laughs> How come the yeah, well, moustache hasn't grown with the rest of it? Peter Dibdin and I am a driving instructor. The Brussels Eurocrats are introducing a new stringent, overcomplicated, pedantic written highway code exam, which makes my job as a driving instructor all the more pleasurable. <laughs> Hello there, and uh, before we start, uh, there's just the small matter of the fee. That's uh, 20 pounds each per lesson, please. 20 pounds? Yes. Mr. Robinson, £20. Perhaps if you could drive, you'd be able to make some money from your skill. <laughs> but you can't, can you? Come on, don't embarrass yourself. Come on, Mr. Robinson. Cough up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely. OK, there we go. OK. <laughs> Lesson one. 
Oh, what's this? Looks a bit frightening, doesn't it? Yes, it's the traffic light sign. Now, one of the hardest things about the highway code test is learning what each of these colours means and in what sequence they occur. But luckily for you, you have me, Peter Dibdin, as a teacher. And I've compiled a simple song to help you remember the traffic light sequence. It is called Peter Dibdin's Traffic Light Sequence Song. And it goes like this. <clears throat> Red is the colour of the apple, so fine. Stop! Red and amber is the sunset in the evening time. Get ready. Green is the top, all covered in slime. Go! Amber is the sunrise in the morning time. Stop! Unless breaking would be more dangerous than continuing. And that is the order of the traffic light sign. <laughs> Isn't it? So, Julie, perhaps you'd like to sing the song for everyone. Off you go. Red is the colour of the sunset. And... I can't remember it. I'm sorry. Are you stupid, Julie? Are you a stupid fool? Do you have a memory, Julie? Yes. Well, why can't you sing the song, then? My nephew Chris knows the song already. He is three years old. How old are you, Julie? You look about 60. I'm 39. Well, why can't you drive then? You can't even drive, you <laughs> stupid old woman. <laughs> Sally, perhaps you were listening. Perhaps I wasn't completely wasting my time like I was with old cloth ears here. Come on, Sally, <laughs> sing the song, Sally, sing. The colour of the traffic lights is red, red and amber, green, amber, red. No, Sally, I think I asked you to sing the song. <laughs> sing, Sally, sing. I've learned the colours anyway. It's easier. <gasps> Can you drive, Sally? Can you, I mean, can you drive out on the road, on your own, without someone in the car to make sure you don't make a stupid mistake? In the eyes of the law, can you do that, Sally? No. No. So I don't think we have to listen to your opinion, do we? That's the opinion of somebody who can't even drive. <laughs> the traffic light sequence song is easier than just remembering the colours. Simon, what colour is an apple? Green. Yes, that's right. No, no, no. Red is the colour of the apple, so fine. Stop! No, most apples are green or yellow. No, because a frog is green, isn't it? So, <laughs> anyone, what colour is the sunset? Pink. Yellow. Orange. Orange. Sometimes. <laughs> no, it's, it's red and amber. It's easy! Now, the trouble is that all the objects, are, they're really confusing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about everyone else here, but I've had 135 lessons at 16 pounds 40 a gun. Yeah. And all my mates whose dad taught them to drive around the car park, they, they only needed about eight lessons. Mm, yeah, I mean, so, I, I just want to have a go at the test. You vain man. That's what you'll be telling me next. You know the highway code already, without me having to teach it to you, do you? Yes, yes, I do. Oh, you do? Well, come on up. Come on, let's prove it in front of everyone. Come on, up you come and ask you some questions. Come on, yes, stand there. If you know it already, you'll be able to tell me what a red triangle placed on the hard shoulder of the motorway means, then, won't you? It means that there is a broken down vehicle 50 yards ahead. Yes, well, that was an easy one. <laughs> what is the total stopping distance of a car travelling at 60 miles per hour? Uh, 240 feet. No, I meant in the rain. 480 feet. Yeah. <laughs> right, so let's see if you're so clever after this one. Born in Shrewsbury, I was the inventor of the Velcro fastening suede textured driving glove <laughs> with a round hole in the back of the hand area. Who am I? That is not the highway code. Oh, yes, it is, Mr. Catchpole. Rule 87, paragraph 4. Mr. I'm completely ready for my test after just 135 lessons. Catchpole, go on. You've made a lunk of yourself. Go on, sit down. You big, you big pranny. You can't even try. Is there anybody else? OK, so let's all sing my Peter Dibdin song together, OK? One, two, three. Red is come on or of the apple so but stop! Come on, it's easy. Are you stupid? In June. Beatles, it's great. Have you heard that they're, they're back where they belong at number four in the hit parade? <laughs> Is that where they belong? At yeah. number four, yeah. specifically number four. Ice Tea, yeah. The Sex Pistols, Paul Simon, yeah. The Beatles, four. Yeah. It's, uh, Oasis at eight, The Smurfs yeah, at 12, 12 proportionally. Like that, yeah. That's how it works. It's great, isn't it? Great new song. Have you heard it? Yeah, it's great, Rich. Brilliant. Brilliant. If you like a load of old C90s cobbled together, 
in an attempt to metaphorically piss into the open grave of one of the greatest songwriters in the 20th century. <laughs> uh, brilliant. If, you, if you like that, it's brilliant. Well, I happen to do like that. So I do, I love that. That's my favourite kind of music. I love the pissing aspect. Right. <laughs> Only in a metaphorical sense. Yeah, There's nothing yeah, funny yeah. about me. Yeah. But... <laughs> Luckily for us, in our audience tonight is someone who was very, very nearly in the Beatles. In fact, he has self-styled himself as the tenth Beatle. It's Nick Wood. Will you please welcome him? And play that, Nick. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, Nick, you're the tenth Beatle? Yeah. Well, the way, the way I look at it uh, is this, that there are about five other people who have a better claim than me as far as nearly being in the Beatles is concerned. So you add them to the original four, John, Paul, Ringo and... Well, George. George, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, there you go, I'm the tenth Beatle. God, it must be, must be quite a story. So tell us, how did you nearly get into the Beatles? Well, here I go again. Uh, I've told <laughs> this story so many times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I saw the advert uh, in a newspaper, and it said, Wanted, drummer for new band, new band. incredibly, like, new band, the Beatles. Yeah. You know, and I actually thought about replying to it, you know. Mm. And to, if I had, if I had actually replied to it, you know, I would have been drumming the drums yeah. instead of Ringo. When, mm. when I think of what I missed out on, you know, I feel sick. <laughs> Sorry, can I just get this straight? Just your claim to nearly be in the Beatles is that you... You saw an advertisement in 1962. No, no, oh, sorry. No, no not sorry. in 1962. Uh. No, no, a friend of mine in Gospel, where I come from, Jody yeah. Rook, oh, yeah. he showed me an advert from an old uh, Liverpool Echo mm. from 1962 in 1983. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if I, but if I'd replied to that advert in 1962, that'd have been me. Money, drugs, women, you know. If I'd answered that advert in 1962 and, and been able to play the drums, it, it would have been... <laughs> Well, you, you can't even play the drums. Well, it's just banging a bit of an old stick about it. <laughs> oh, well, maybe if you'd seen the advertisement like two weeks before the audition, you could have learnt to play the drums in time. <laughs> well, yes, but uh, they'd, they'd have had to uh, wait a little while because I, I wasn't actually born until 1970. <laughs> and uh, I think I would have had to have been at least four uh, before I was as good at drumming as Ringo. <laughs> in, uh... If that had been a scenario, that would have been me in the Shea Stadium. Yeah, come and lads, come and lads. You know, when I think about it, you know, it just makes me sick to my stomach. If we could just come in on this a bit, Nick, um, I think that your claim to be the tenth Beatle is a bit vain, really, isn't it? You know. Eleventh? Not really. I mean, you weren't, even, you weren't even alive, were you, when the Beatles were going, let's face it. Oh, I see. I see. You want me to have been alive in the 60s. Oh, yes. As well as nearly being in the Beatles. Yeah, no, yeah. I'll tell you what you want, Sonny. You want the moon on a stick. I don't want the moon on a stick. The Beatles were going. The moon on us. You do, you see. You want I the don't moon on us. <laughs> well, the, there's no smoke without fire, is there? Everyone seems to. The tenth Beatle seems to think you want Only the moon on us. Only because you told him I want. I've never no. met you before in my life. I came to that conclusion on my own. That's what everyone says about you, Stu. That's, I, I that's your reputation, Stu. People I, go down the street and they go, shh, there's that moon stick bloke. I that's don't you. Want the moon. I don't want you. Because you want the stick. I don't want you. You want it. You want it. You want it. You want it. For the last 40 years running, Bridgewater in Somerset has been the winner of the annual Most Stinking Town in Britain Award. <laughs> but this year, their crown was taken by Ballam in South London. <laughs> Thanks to the single efforts of our next guest, will you please welcome him? He's our regular lifestyle contributor, Peter! <laughs> What are you doing, Pete? What's uh, um, me and Alan Milk Carton, buddy, we've been making a film. Look, this yeah. is my megaphone. <laughs> I found it around the neck of a dog that was lying very still in Ballam High Road. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this yeah. is my Come film on. coming up. Come on. That is my guide to eating out cheaply. Lights, camera. Ballum! <laughs> Years ago, I was working as a shepherd in a semi-mythical, pre-biblical land. My job, basically, was to look after these sheep in a hillside pasture, overlooking a village, the economy of which was very dependent on the sheep farming industry. 
Well, the work was very easy. The sheep, you can see, are very docile. And the only real risk to them was from predators, uh, such as maybe a wolf. Oh, not surprisingly, after about four days, down about the Thursday of the first week, you know, I was bored out of my mind. What can I do to liven things up a bit? <laughs> I know. So I walked to the edge of the hill overlooking the village, the economy of which was very dependent on the sheep farming industry, as I said, and I shouted, Villagers! Come quickly! There's a wolf! I was joking. <laughs> it was a joke. Ha <laughs> I get it. No wolf. <laughs> oh, that's quite a good one. <laughs> look, look, I can appreciate that for you it can get boring doing this shepherd job. And, and for you, it, it may seem quite funny to pretend there's a wolf. But your actions were irresponsible. My forge will have gone out now. And all the village workers will have, will have lost half a day's work. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's got a yeah, point. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. funny. Well, look, the fishmonger thinks it's funny. Look, look. <laughs> he said there was a wolf, <laughs> but there wasn't. <laughs> no wolf! No, no, don't encourage him. But we'll put it down to youthful high spirits this time and forget about it, OK? But don't do it again. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> Then I, I made a sort of sad face, so they'd think I was ashamed. But secretly, I was laughing at them behind their backs, and they never knew. <laughs> about a week later, I was, I was bored out of my mind again. I know, I'll do that, uh, that shouting out about the wolf thing again. That worked. So I went over to the edge of the hill, overlooking the village, the economy of which is very dependent on the sheep farming industry, as I said. And I shouted out, Hey, villagers! Come quickly! There's a wolf! <laughs> Yes! I know that there wasn't before, but there is one now this time. Well, all right then, come on! <laughs> come on, it's an emer wolf based emergency! <laughs> Where is it? Where's the wolf? It's in those bushes up there! Where? Well, we can't say any wolf. Ha <laughs> ha! There isn't one. I tricked you. <laughs> <laughs> Again? Didn't you listen to what I told you last time? It really isn't funny this time. Look, the fishmonger's still laughing. Look. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. You said there was a wolf, but there wasn't. He tricked us all again. No. <laughs> it was quite funny last time, but it's not funny a second time. Well, I think it's funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Just encouraging you. you. You seem like a nice bloke, you know. But you're looking for trouble. Sorry, I didn't think. And that's another half day wasted. Yeah, so that's right. I've got a to do and everything. Yeah. You know? So really, yeah. Come on. Yeah. don't do it again. Or you'll regret it. Now, that's just a friendly warning. <laughs> No, no, wolf! <laughs> Even despite their threats, I soon became bored again. And I was left with sadly no option but to go to the edge of the hill overlooking the village, the economy of which was very dependent on the sheep farming industry, as I said, and to shout out as before, Hey, villagers! Come quickly, there's a wolf! Come on! Yeah! Oh, oh, I think we're stupid! It's, 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 yeah. it's biting them! With its mouth! <laughs> And he's eating their wool! You'll need that for your economy and everything. Come on! Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill them at ten now! Where is it? Where's the wolf? Where is it? Where, where, is, it? where is it? Come on, come on. Where's the wolf? There's a wolf. There isn't one. Ha ha ha! I can't believe you've done this again. <laughs> it just isn't funny. Even the fishmonger doesn't think it's funny now. Well, I think the fishmonger does think it's funny, but he's suppressing it, cos he's, he's scared all you men are going to hit him. No, I don't. <laughs> well, I did find it funny the first two times, but oh, that's boring. Look, it just isn't funny. 
It's just the same joke every time. I mean, maybe if you had the imagination to have the, the sheep being attacked by some other animal, vary it a little bit, like, like a mountain cat, then, then maybe it would be funny. Or, or even a surreal animal, like a fish. But when you didn't do that, it's just the wolf joke every time. And it isn't funny. It's boring and repetitive. Yeah, but for me, right, it's the repetition that makes it funny. The actual <laughs> audacity of not even having the imagination to vary the animal. That, for me, that's what makes it funnier every time. <laughs> it just isn't funny. You can't say that. He was a subjective thing. You haven't been listening to what I've said. No! <laughs> I used to be a television producer in the comedy department. I used to produce a lot of Smith and Jones. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I know what comedy is. Uh, and the wolf repetition isn't funny. People don't want to see that sort of stuff. Well, I think they do, so, ah! <laughs> if this happens again, I'm going to have to let you go. But I'm going to give you one more chance, because I, I, I don't want to see you ruin your life and your job prospects over something so stupid. <laughs> and I, I hope you respect me for that, for my fairness. Yes, I do. You're very fair. <laughs> I didn't respect him, really. <laughs> I he weak. Of course, about a week later, a wolf did actually attack the sheep. Took out about four of the lambs, two of the ewes, and that's really bad news for a community so dependent on the sheep farming industry. Come on! Come quickly! There's a wolf! Oh, he's oh, not dead. Oh, 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 Jimmy oh, Hill's oh, attacking oh, the sheep oh, as oh, well, oh, isn't he? Oh, <laughs> Well, within minutes, the uh, flock was decimated and the most basic short-term economic survival of the community that had employed me was called into doubt. Needless to say, I was sacked. <laughs> you not trusting me about Somerset? It's a bit like that, isn't it? It's a kind of like a, a boy who cried wolf situation. <laughs> Is that it? It's here. Yeah. So, you spent the last eight minutes of our time <laughs> telling us a story we already know. Mm in much more detail than actually is required. Do you, think that's, do you think that's a worthwhile thing to do? Yes, I do, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. You haven't even got the imagination to give it, like, a funny surprise ending, different than the yeah, story. Yeah, but for me, the fact that it doesn't have a funny surprise <laughs> ending, that is part of what makes it really funny. Just well, no, 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 it's not funny, Stu, it's not you funny. You can't just say, Rich, that something isn't funny. You well, I can, Stu, because I used to write humorous monologues for Tracy McLeod on Channel 4's Stab in the Dark. <laughs> yes, that's right, look impressed. Is there another series of Stab in the Dark in the background? No. Anyway, um, I brought you a present back from Somerset, Rich. All right. Yeah, there it is, look. It's the best postcard in Somerset, then. <laughs> OK, that's the end of the show. Go home now. Come on, all you get out. Come on, get out. Go. 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 Stu, Go Stu, home. stop what? it. Stop I'm it. I'm not here to entertain stop. you. You are <laughs> here to entertain you, Stu. That's the point. Just be polite. Why are you being so grumpy? Well, I've had a bit of a bad week. I'll tell you why, because, Richard, I've split up with my girlfriend. I'm, oh. I'm not, not that kitten, Simon. No, I'm not the kitten. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. How dare you trick us like that? Shut up. <laughs> no, I split up with a real human being. There was three reasons why things aren't really working out. Um, firstly, doing a job like this, very antisocial hours, obviously. Secondly, I think, in retrospect, we both wanted different things out of the relationship. And um, thirdly, she was shagging all my friends behind my back. <laughs> since learned that I did pass on to them all my genital warts, so... <laughs> you see, every clown's got a silver lining, hasn't it? <laughs> Bye! Bye. Bye. See you, um, General Warts has got, like, big green things and you squeeze and stuff comes out. Oh, that's peas, Rich. Oh, yeah, I've got peas, yeah. Patsy Kenzie's got peas. Yeah, I've got the seeds from her. Thank you.